Now, the next question is the flip side of the previous one. In the previous question, we just needed reagents to show what happened. The mechanism question is not what happens, but how. The what happens is already here. The product is drawn. The reagents are given. A very important and somewhat common mistake is to start adding reagents to the question. No. The mechanism question, you give me arrows and charges, everything else I gave you. You don't need to add any reagents to this. Everything you need to answer this question, other than arrows and charges, is already present. All right, so let's look at that. Um, I'm going to redraw HBR just so we have the bond between them. So first, as with most of the reactions in these two chapters that we talked about, the pi bond is acting as a nucleophile. It's going after the more electrophilic hydrogen and breaking the bond to the more polarized and more electronegative bromine. So then, there's a here. So, I now still have two bonds there, two bonds between those two. The hydrogen can go to one of the two original alkyne carbons. It is going to end up on the less substituted carbon because it is a reaction that has a cation and a cation form is an intermediate. Now, at that point, we have the second step here of the nucleophilic attack. The bromine is going to attack that, and that's the first of our products, is that we now have uh, a bromine and hydrogen added. So, then we're going to do it again, very much like we did with the alkenes, since now this is an alkene even though we don't see it as an intermediate along the way, as is drawn up above there. We attack the same hydrogen for the same reason. We form a cation on the same spot, again, for the same reason. We now have this as a stabilized cation. It's now a tertiary, technically a tertiary cation. And we've now added the other hydrogen to the, ter the, terminal, at, the terminal carbon. In the product we didn't show those, but just for purposes of finishing the job here, we'll show them. So, last step, nucleophilic attack, and that's the end of it. So, we have two different cationic steps, we have two different pi breakage steps, we have two different attacks on HBr, we have two different attacks by Br-. minus. Important things here, which atom is more reasonably charged as a cation in both this molecule and this one, or this intermediate and this one because that's going to determine where the bromines end up. If I had drawn that part on the other atom, well, then I am not able to reasonably explain how I got the product that I see up there. The only trip up with this is, of course, because you have some inexperience here, just not actually remembering that everything is, you know, got hydrogens where they need to be. Some people trip up on things like that, hopefully not. Um, the alkene geometry, is, the alkyne geometry is a little bit weird. We have to remember there's actually a carbon here and here and here. So I have a three carbon chain hanging off of it, and then the fourth carbon is actually where everything happened. That's this one. So you see the end here is my one, two, three carbons, and then this is carbon number four, where everything happened, where the bromines ended up. So again, inexperienced more than anything, but typical mistakes on this question were to draw cations in the wrong place, add reagents to it for no reason, or um, just lose track of how many carbons are hanging off of it and give me a five carbon chain or a two carbon chain hanging off the side here. So just keep track of what's there. Realize that a mechanism question, you're adding nothing but the arrows and any charges for intermediates. That's it.